Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to be doing a short walkthrough for the Week 1 lab analyzing protocols with Wireshark for ISSC 421. So, for my assignment worksheet for the labs, I'm going to click on the Week 1 lab analyzing protocols with Wireshark. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And from here, I'm just going to begin the lab. For this demonstration, I'll only be doing Section 2, Applied Learning. Students are encouraged to do Section 1, the hands-on demonstration, before proceeding on to Section 2, Applied Learning. So under Section 2, Applied Learning, we're going to begin with Part 1. And we begin with Step Number 1, Open Up the Connections folder and Launch Target Windows 02. So I'm going to open up the Connections folder here. And I'm going to launch Target Windows 02. Step number two. From the Target Windows 02 taskbar, launch the Wireshark application. This is the icon for Wireshark. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And Wireshark begins to load. And it says, from the Wireshark capture screen, select both the True Lab and the student interfaces. Then apply a capture filter to exclude RDP traffic. From the capture session. So we have to select both of our interfaces. Now to do this, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click on the first interface and then I'm going to click on the second interface. From there I'm going to go back up to the filter and I'm going to type in the word not and I'm going to select from the options not TCP port 3389. Port 3389 is the port that is used by RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. Now you'll notice that when I have both of these interfaces selected, that if I type in the command correctly into the filter, that everything turns green. If you do not type in the correct command, or you do not have the interfaces selected, you will not have a green background. Step number four. From the Wireshark menu, click Capture, go to Options. To open the Capture Interfaces dialog box and verify that promiscuous mode is enabled, then start the capture process. So we go up here to Capture, and we're going to go to Options. And here we see that promiscuous mode, the box is checked for both of the interfaces. So promiscuous mode is enabled. To start the capture process, I can use the Start button here on the Options window. Give it just a moment and you can see the network traffic that is being captured by Wireshark. Step number five, from the target Windows 02 taskbar, launch a command prompt window. This is the command prompt here. Go ahead and launch that. Step number six, at the command prompt, you're going to execute path ping and you're going to ping the following IP address, 172.30.0.2. Go ahead and type in path ping, followed by the IP address of 172.30.0.2. Hit enter. We are pinging the V workstation and we are calculating the number of hops between the source and the destination addresses. From the output, you can see that we have two hops. Step number seven at the command prompt. Type in the command or execute the command exit to close the window. Step number 8. From the target Windows 02 taskbar, launch Internet Explorer and navigate to www.cloudparadox.com. Let's go ahead and launch our Internet Explorer. And in the address bar, we type in www.cloudparadox.com. Go ahead and hit enter. And we are to wait two minutes and then close the browser window. Let's go ahead and close out the browser window. It's been two minutes. And let's go ahead and maximize our Wireshark window. And now we have Wireshark back up and running. Step number 12, apply a display filter to display only TCP traffic for port 80. From the display filter, we're gonna type in TCP dot port space equals equals 80. Notice that the background turns green. Let me know if that command is correct. Let's go ahead and launch the filter. 
and now we're only looking at traffic for TCP port 80. Step number 13. Make a screen capture showing the filtered port 80 traffic and paste it into your lab report file. Now to take a screenshot easily, you can go up here to System. From here you can select Take Screenshot. You can then save the file to your local machine. And then once you have it saved to your desktop, you can open it up and then you can copy and paste that into your lab file. Step number 14. In the frame summary pane, select the first frame. In the frame details pane, expand the frame header to identify the fields related to time. So this is the first frame in our frame summary pane. We're going to expand that. And down here, you'll see that we have the time. Step number 16, make a screen capture showing the fields related to time and paste that into your lab report file. Again, you can go up here to system and you can do another screenshot. Step number 17, remove the display filter. Go up here into the display filter, back that off. And that concludes part one, exploring Wireshark. We're now going to proceed on to part two, Analyze Wireshark Capture Information. Under Applied Learning, I'm going to go ahead and click on Part 2. Scroll on down here. And it says, from the Wireshark menu, open the C colon forward slash ISSA underscore tools folder. And inside there, you will find a Wi-Fi packet capture or a PCAP file entitled Wi-Fi Packet Capture. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. But first thing we have to do is stop the capture here. And then we can go to File. Then we can click on Open. And from here, we're inside of the ISSA underscore tools folder. And here you see the Wi Fi packet capture dot PCAP NG file. Go ahead and double click that. And we can continue without saving our previous capture. In the frame summary pane, select frame number eight. Let's scroll on down here just a little bit. And here's frame number eight. And it tells you that there are two different ways to locate the frame. I showed you the easiest way. In the frame details pane, select the frame header to display the number of bytes captured and the bytes on the wire. In our details pane, that would be the very first line that we see for frame number eight. It gives us the information about the number of bytes captured and the bytes on the wire. Step number five, in the lab report file, record the number of bytes captured and the bytes on the wire. Step number six, in the frame details pane, expand the Ethernet 2 line to display the data link layer details. Scroll on down inside of the details pane until you come to Ethernet 2 expand that and here you have the data link details in the lab report file record the manufacturer of the destination device that would be right here step number eight collapse the ethernet to details step number nine in the frame details pane expand the internet protocol line to display the internet protocol details that would be right here. In the lab report file, record the source IP address, and that would be right here. Step number 11. In the frame detail pane, collapse the internet protocol line to hide the network layer details. In the frame details pane, explain the transmission control protocol line to display the transport layer details. That would be right here. Step number 13. In the frame details pane, collapse the transmission control protocol line to hide the transport layer details. Number 14. In the frame details pane, expand the secure socket layer line to display the application layer details. Let's scroll down here just a little bit. And we're going to expand where it says secure sockets layer. Number 15. In the frame detail pane, expand the cipher suites detail secure sockets layer equals TLS version 1.2 record layer greater than handshake protocol greater than cipher suites 
in parentheses 13 suites, then adjust the frame border until all 13 suites are visible in the window. To do that, we're going to have to go down here a little bit. We'll next need to expand the handshake protocol. Make a screen capture showing the entire list of cipher suites and paste it into the lab report file. Again, you can adjust your window by just grabbing these here. And you can then capture all 13 cipher suites. To capture a screenshot of all 13 cipher suites, you must first expand where it shows you the information about the 13 cipher suites. And there you can now capture that screenshot. Step number 17, in the frame details pane, collapse the secure socket layer. Step number 18, apply a display filter to display only TCP traffic for port 443. So we're going to go up here and we're going to type in TCP and we're going to select the option for TCP.port equals equals 443. And to see this, we're going to have to pull down our window again. Step number 19, in the frame summary page, select frame 110. Here's frame 110 right here. And you can pop it up into a separate window just by double clicking it. Step number 20, in the hex pane, locate the issuer of the certificate. And to do that, this is the hex pane. You'd have to scroll down here. And you have to find the issuing authority for the certificate itself. But we can go ahead and close that out because in step number 22 it says in the frame summary pane select frame 111. Okay, so here we have frame 111. Scroll on down here and if you go to the secure socket layer, which I've already expanded here, let's go ahead and drop that back down. So now if I expand this on frame 111, you'll notice that I can get some information about the certificate. Again, I'll just expand the TLS version 1 information. And here you can start seeing some information about the certificate, its length, the number of bytes, and all that good stuff. And step number 24, make a screen capture showing the details of the certificate and paste it into your lab report. So if you would like to expand the windows again, you can. Step number 25, in the frame summary pane, select frame 112. Here we have frame 112. In this frame, there are two socket layers. This is the final portion of the handshake as the cipher key exchange is completed. In the frame details pane, locate the public key and signature hash. So for frame 112, I have expanded both of the socket layers. And to see the public key and signature hash, you'd have to look at the length, which is right here. Step number 28, remove the current display filter. Go up here to the filter, and let's just back that off. Step number 29, open the display filter expression tool. That'd be right here. Let's go ahead and double click that. Step number 30, use the display filter expression tool to build a filter that displays only traffic related to Dropbox.com, then click OK to close the display filter expression tool. So for the field name, we need to look for IP version 4. Let's just scroll on down until we get to the eyes. And we have IP version 4, Internet Protocol version 4. Go ahead and expand that. And we're going to select the first option for IP dash address dot source or destination address. Go ahead and click on that. And then from the relation window, we're going to accept the equals equals sign. And down here in the value field for the IP version 4 address, we're going to type in the IP address for Dropbox, which is 162.125. Dot seven dot three. Notice down here in the filter that we have all that information we chose from the expression tool. You can go ahead and click in the box for the expression tool. And down here you'll see that the OK button is already selected. Just go ahead and hit the Enter key. And you notice up here in the filter window that all that information is now present.
To filter only the information for the Dropbox IP address, just go ahead and start the filter. And there we have it. And if we adjust our display window, you'll notice that all the information we have here only applies to Dropbox. Step number 32, from the Wireshark menu, select Statistics and Flow Graph. So let's go ahead and click on Statistics. And from here, we'll select Flow Graph. Step number 33, in the Flow Graph tool, select Displayed Packets from the Show drop-down list. This is the Show drop-down list, and we shall select Displayed Packet. From the Flow Type, we're going to pull this down, and from here, we're going to select TCP flows. And in step 34, in the graph, locate the first three-way TCP handshakes. Well, that would be here on this top line. That would be the first one. This here would be the second part of the three-way handshake. And then this would be the third and final part of that three-way handshake. Step 35, save the flow graph to the target window 02 desktop as your name, the date, flow statistics underscore s2 dot png. Replacing your name with your actual name and the current date with today's date. Just do a save as and then put that information in here that they asked for. Pull this down, save it as a PNG file, and you can just type in that information that it asked you for in step 35. Step 36 says to close the flow graph window. Let's go ahead and do that. In step 37, it says remove the current display filter, then apply a filter to display only DNS packets and select the first frame. So let's go ahead and back this off. DNS uses UDP port 53. So the expression we're going to use is UDP dot port space equals equals 53. Let's go ahead and filter that information. And now you can see that the information being displayed is just for DNS. And it tells us that frame 1 is to request from the local IP host 10.2.1.45 to its local domain name server, which is 172.20.5.100, to resolve the name of client.dropbox.com into an IP address. Step number 38. In the frame details pane, right here, expand the domain name query line to display the DNS query details. So that would be expanding this line right here. And we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And it tells us that in this section of the details pane, you learn that the query was a standard query with one question and that the response to the query can be found in frame 2. You'll examine that frame later in this lab. Step number 39. In the Frame Details pane, expand the Queries line to display the query posed to this packet. Go ahead and expand the Queries line, and it shows you the query that was posed to this packet. Step number 40. Make a screen capture showing the query posed to this packet and paste that into your lab file report. Number 42. In the Frame Summary pane, select Frame Number 2. Here's our Frame Number 2. In the frame detail pane under domain name response, you will see both a query line and answers line. In the query section of this packet, you can confirm that this is the response to the query for clientdropbox.com. And step number 43, close Wireshark window. This was a long lab, and I know that it was a little difficult, but hopefully this video tutorial is going to help get you through it. And if you have any questions or you have any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.